Hello, hello, Crystal here, and I am back to read chapter five of my book, Woman vs. Freedom, Seven Powerful Ways to Identify and Conquer Your Fears. Let's see if we can get this. To, there we go. A book I wrote eight years ago, and at the time I wrote this book, it was actually a cry for help. Um, but now I realize eight years later that this is actually a strategy or some keys to help myself <laughs> as well as you get through some tough times in your life. You may feel like you are in a valley right now. You're at the lowest place or you just you're going through a time where you need to transition and fear may be setting in and you don't even realize it so you procrastinate you second guess you worry you doubt you're wondering if it's time for you to do this don't allow fear to stop you okay don't allow fear to get in the way of what is happening in your life that major transition or change that is ultimately going to change your life you don't want to miss the moment. So I just previously read chapter four, Defeat One Minute. And one highlight from that is procrastination will strengthen your fear, kill your dreams, and steal your opportunities. So if you're at a point in your life right now where you know there's a major change or just something big needs to happen in your life, don't procrastinate on it. Don't allow procrastination to kill your dreams and steal your opportunities. Don't allow procrastination to become such an authority and take a hold on your life and your decisions and what you do that you miss what's happening in your life right now. And usually when you procrastinate, it has something to do with fear. And I'm not going to get deep into that. You just got to go back and watch chapter um, four, re listen to chapter four and just listen to the words of encouragement that I share but procrastination will definitely steal that from you. And I say that because, you know, I just went through a major life transition and it's been a year now and it was one of the hardest things that I've had to do. But I knew that I could not allow myself or fear, worry, doubt, procrastination to sabotage what was happening. And that was just uprooting our family from everything we know and moving to another state. And I knew it was time. So there were certain things that I did to make sure that I did not miss this opportunity because I knew it was an open door for me to walk through. And I needed to have the keys to get through, to open that door, to get through to transitioning and moving our family, like to stick with it. And um, here I am. So go back and watch that and watch the previous videos the and, the and listen to the other chapters. But I will tell you at the end how you can grab a free copy of this book. So here's chapter five. Your lifestyle is a ministry. Um, and at the end, I'll share why this is a key to... Um, identifying fear and conquering your fears. It's all about, you know, having just a different perspective about your life and looking at things differently. So chapter five, your lifestyle is a ministry. What are you doing right now? Well, I can't ask that question because you're reading this book or listening right now, of course, but I am referring to what you are doing in your life. What are you doing in your life? Is it something you really want to be doing? Are you setting a good example for others around you? No matter what you are doing and where you are located, people young and old are watching. It may not seem like it because you think you are a nobody or you think you are unworthy at this moment. That's why you are reading this book. You are a low-key celebrity, okay? Yep, you are. To your children, husband, family, friends, co-workers, etc. The people you surround yourself with every day are watching closely. Every move you make, every word you speak. Are you speaking positively or are you complaining? Are you encouraging others or are you gossiping? Are you pursuing a life? that you will love or are you staying in the same dead end routine? I've realized that my children will reflect my lifestyle. 
So what I do now is important for their future. If I continue to live my life fearful, doubting, complaining, staying in a dead end job, doing what others want me to do, etc., they will follow suit. If this continues, I may end up pressuring them into doing things that they really don't want to do because I didn't conquer fear and live my life on purpose. That is my worst fear, not fulfilling my purpose. Even if it fails, at least I can tell them I tried. With all that being said, what does your lifestyle look like right now? Are you giving the right message? People are always watching you, whether you like it or not. If that doesn't make you think about the life you are living right now, then you are one <laughs> tough cookie. Fearless reflection. Do you find yourself influencing the world or is it influencing you? Number two. When it's all said and done, will you have said more than you have done? Number three, what piece of advice would you offer yourself <laughs> as a newborn baby? And here's the scripture. Let your light shine before men that theory may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Y'all, that scripture is not right. That's the end of chapter five. But let me find that scripture and read it right um let's see got my handy dandy bible app here matthew <clears throat> five sixteen nope nope i went to chapter 16 matthew chapter 5 verse 16 Okay, and it says, King James Version, uh, <laughs> let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So that's a typo in there. Y'all, y'all getting the like raw, uncut version of this book because <laughs> there's a lot of typos and i paid somebody to edit my book who did a horrible job at the time but hey you live you learn you become you grow you become okay so chapter five chapter that was chapter five very short um your lifestyle is a ministry so let's go back a little bit um when I say that you are a low-key celebrity. So a lot of people live life daily not thinking that their lifestyle is ministry. And when I say ministry, I know people automatically think religion. They think church. They think, um, you know, something automatically connected to church and God and stuff like that. But let me look up the definition of ministry really quick. <clears throat> so here's a definition of ministry the service functions or profession of a minister of religion the body or class of ministers of religion the service function or office of a minister of state um let's see any of the administrative governmental departments of certain countries usually under the direction of a minister of state the building that houses such an administrative department um and let's see something that serves as an agency instrument or means okay that's the one i'm looking for right there number nine it's like i said even the dictionary makes ministry you know seem so you know like a religion but it says something that serves as an agency instrument or means so um let me look at the source. Yeah, still all religious terms. I guess the dictionary didn't do what I needed it to do. But ministry is like um, the message, right? Like what message is your life giving? Your lifestyle is a ministry, meaning that it ministers to people. It's sending a message to people. And that's why I say you are a low-key celebrity. To your children, your husband, your family, your friends, co-workers, the people you surround yourself with every day are watching you closely. Every move you make, every word you speak. And um, <clears throat> are you speaking positively or are you complaining? Are you encouraging others or are you gossiping? Are you pursuing a life that will love 
you will love or are you staying in the same dead end routine? Um, so what you do every day on the daily, what you speak, how you act, how you handle situations, especially if you have children and especially if you are married, um, it's going to minister to people. It's going to minister to your home. It's going to minister to your children, your husband. It's going to send a message. And then those people that you are ministering through, through your lifestyle, they're going to have a response to the message that you're sending them and that you're giving them. What response do you want these people to have? Like what message are you sending and what response are you receiving? So if I'm constantly complaining, I'm out of control, I'm not organized, chaotic, I'm always speaking negative words out of my mouth, I'm frustrated, stressed, um, that's, that's, that's a message that I'm sending out constantly. So the response that comes back from that is going to be what? The same thing. Like you're going to receive what you give out. So you're going to receive what your life is ministering, right? And I want you to just take a moment to think about that or journal that. Like what, what has your lifestyle been ministering to other people? Like what message have you been sending out to other people? And even me talking about it right now makes me really think about the message that I send. When I get around a certain group of people, my, you know, I could... My lifestyle is different. I've also had times where, you know, I would portray a lifestyle in one place before other people. And then I'm living a totally different. I got the baby right here, y'all. I'm living a totally different lifestyle at home. And y'all, I had to. Like, even now, there are some things where. I'm not ministering the proper message. I'm not sending the proper message. And I don't want it to be that way. Like I want the same message straight across the board in a sense. Like I don't want to be one person outside of my home and then inside my home, I'm a different person. I don't want it where um, I'm outside of my home and when I'm with my children and my husband, I'm a certain way. But at home, it's totally different. I don't want to be that woman. And I used to live life that way. Like I would portray one lifestyle and when I get home, I'm a totally different person. I used to hide like I would, I would I'm a pastor's kid, y'all. Let me just be honest. I'm a pastor's kid. So, and I'm grown Lord, but this is going to free some people today. <laughs> I, um, so I grew up in church from the day I was born. And so when I got into my adult years, young teen years, young adult years, you know, I would go to the club Saturday night. I would be in church on Sunday morning, probably playing the drums, probably, I don't know, singing a solo, doing something in church. But I was in the club the night before, probably drinking, went home drunk. Y'all, it's the truth. And so that was me living two different lives, like sending a message, ministering a certain lifestyle. So these people that was with me in the club on Saturday, um, do you think that, you know, what kind of message was I sending if I said, come on, y'all, let's go to church. And then I'm up in church singing and stuff like what kind of message am I sending? Right. And I, you know, I, I didn't I don't want to live that life anymore. So the way that I'm portraying my life, like the message I'm trying to send outside of my home before other people. Oh, look at me. See me as this person. I live this type of way, but at home is totally different. I don't want to be that person. That's a very dishonest life. And I don't want to attract that on the back end, if y'all understand what I'm saying. So you just have to pay attention to, you know, what lifestyle you're living. People are watching you, but don't let that stop you from um, going after the things that you desire, because, you know, obviously we're talking about identifying and conquering fears and some things can set in from that just because people knew you 
knew they know of you they know the lifestyle you live or used to live so you feel like you're still portraying that message sending that message even though you don't live that life anymore so you feel like you are an imposter or you feel like i'm not gonna do that because these people over here know me and they know that's not how i live i might talk like this on social media or on you know video but my cousin know that's not how i really go about things even when you're not that person anymore and you know you're not but you're the past is trying to keep a hold on you and tell you girl you know that's not you're not that person and oh the people will come that knew you and was doing all the things with you seeing how you were living and try to come and throw that back at you and say look remember this is my response to that message that you sent me through your lifestyle they still try to throw that response at you but you now you don't have to receive that response anymore just know that that was a time in your life where you had to grow through that now your environment and your life is not conducive to those things anymore you don't receive those things anymore. So those people that are still over there living this life that you used to live with them, they're still receiving that message from that lifestyle and that person you used to be. And they're still responding to that lifestyle that you used to live. So how are you going to handle that? Are you going to... Um, um, <laughs> um, are you still going to receive that message? Y'all, excuse me. I was looking at the questions. Or are you going to keep moving forward and now send a different message to the people that are willing to receive what you are sending out? Y'all get where I'm going with this. I'm going. Let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There's also a scripture that says, remember not the former things. So that's that message that there those people that knew you still trying to respond to you. That old lifestyle that you were ministering, that old lifestyle that um, that old message that you were sending. They're still trying to respond to you in that way. And remember not the former things. You're renewing and you're transforming. God is doing something new in you. And that's the life that you're going to receive. And you're going to settle in and say, okay, that's not me anymore. So I don't receive that message anymore. And if they continue to see me that way, look, I'm healing from that. The person I was at that time is not the person I am right now. And we're going to keep on moving. Then my lifestyle is still a ministry. I still have a message to send. I still have my light to shine so people can see my good works. And that is what I'm going to do. So I'm not even going to reflect on the questions in this, but that's chapter five. And chapter five was your lifestyle is a ministry. And um, if you want to get a copy of this book, <sighs> go to my website, www.crystalclayton.com. You will see the graphic on there right now at this moment. Um, but I will still have a link up somewhere for you to get a copy of this book. Because with all the typos, with the way that I wrote the book at the time, it's still somebody is still going to receive the message and be free from their fears so um thank you for watching follow me on tiktok instagram tiktok is crystal underscore clayton instagram is crystal clayton underscore also go follow fearless money inc um on instagram and i appreciate y'all thank you for listening and remember to go back and watch the other videos where i read the other chapters and gave some words of encouragement share my own testimony y'all this is just about me you know where i was at the time where i am now and where god is trying to take me but also just sharing this and um just shining my light so i hope this shines a light in your dark place on today